The Bitcoin ETF is cute and all, but what performed better than Bitcoin? Chainlink. Despite all those ETF rumors, Bitcoin only went up by 20% in the last seven days. Chainlink did a 40% rally. Now one might say, duh, of course the altcoins go up more when Bitcoin is going up. There's some inherent leverage. When Bitcoin goes up 5%, then of course the altcoins go up 10%. So of course Chainlink has to go up further. But actually that's not true. The altcoins underperformed Bitcoin for quite a while, including during this rally led by the Bitcoin ETF rumors. This year is a chart of total three divided by total, which went down in the last month by 11%. This is the fraction of all of the altcoins within the crypto space. So total three is cryptocurrencies market cap, except Bitcoin and Ethereum. We take that as a fraction of all of crypto. And as we can see, this went down. Now the altcoin dominance in aggregate went down in the last month. Link dominance, chain link dominance went up. Look at this. This is the same time period. This is link.d. So chain link is clearly going against the general market here. It's doing much better than the rest of the altcoin market. The first part of the rally had been started by announcing the CCIP, which helps connecting different blockchains, but also the blockchain ecosystem with traditional finance. But it looks like after that, a lot of this had to do with technicals. There are news around tokenizing assets, etc. But it's not that big of a news to justify that rally. So let's do that. Let's look at the technicals. Let's look at relative evaluation of Chainlink to Bitcoin, to Ethereum, and of course, to the entire market. Are there some resistances and supports that might justify this? And when could this turn around? This is a chart most people look at. Simply Chainlink in US dollars, and this did see a breakout against this resistance here. The issue with charts that simply just look at US dollar valuations is that you have a lot of this macro trends in there. So again, when Bitcoin goes up, the tendency for altcoins is also to go up and vice versa. But what really matters is outperformance. Because in the end, what's the idea? Why do we get in altcoins in the first place? The reason why we get into altcoins is to get outperformance over the safest of the cryptocurrencies, right? Bitcoin apparently has the least upside potential because it's already the largest of the cryptocurrencies. But on the other end, it's also the safest of the cryptocurrencies because there is some security in numbers. So whenever we buy something more risky, i.e. smaller, with a smaller market cap, we should be expecting to be compensated for that risk, right? More risk should mean more return long term. And that's the reason why the relative performance to Bitcoin or to Ethereum matters much more than the chart in US dollars. Even though we all want to spend US dollars, if we look at this through the lens of opportunity costs, then we have to compare link to Bitcoin and to Ethereum. Now what we've got over here is the link chart divided by the Bitcoin chart. And yes, this is no science. These are simply just two parallel curved lines where the tops and the bottoms somewhat align, but it would indicate that potentially there is a bit of a resistance here. There's of course also upside, maybe even up to 380%, but there's also downside. And that could be minus 60% roughly. Now that upside target has to be taken with a grain of salt. And that's because the supply of Chainlink went up by quite a bit in the last year by 13%. But in the last three years, supply increased by more than 50%. So reaching the same rate of valuation to Bitcoin today compared to August of 2020 is not really a fair comparison because in August of 2020, it needed much less capital to achieve that valuation. If you increase the supply, you need more capital to achieve the same price. So a 50% drop from that all time high, which would lead us roughly to this spot here. That would equate the same kind of capital in link because of that supply expansion. So maybe the upside really 
if Chainlink doesn't expand beyond its past highs is only 150% roughly. Let's look at Chainlink relative to Ethereum. This was on a downwards trend for quite a while because of the expanding supply. So Link underperformed ETH by 93%, but now it's in a sideways trading range, but also unfortunately at the upper end here. And link dominance, we have already seen, that's the link dominance chart. Not that obvious where here the resistance and the support is. Support probably around here, but the resistance is pretty hard to pinpoint. If we are pessimistic, we could draw a line something like this, right? No matter how we look at this, my impression is that there's a lot of eyeballs on Chainlink and that people want to get in this asset. The question now is, can the fundamentals catch up to that high expectation? The inflation isn't that bad anymore compared to other altcoins. It already happened to a large degree. 13% in the last 12 months isn't that bad. And there is continued technical development. Chainlink is integrated in pretty much any DeFi platform and it tries to get more and more adoption outside of its current usage of just being a price oracle for DeFi. The tokenomics overall are now much better than they used to be three, four, five years ago. I do see Link as a blue chip within crypto, but I also don't necessarily think that it will instantly 10x from here. It's always a game of risk versus reward. Overall, the altcoin market is doing pretty poorly. Chainlink is able to somewhat withstand that. I don't short the asset just because it's now highly valued because there is something behind all of this. But with the current prices and the current resistances, I'm also pretty cautious to jump on this at this moment. But feel free to share what you think about all of this either down in the comments or in Telegram. Link for Telegram is down below.